I guess so. Today's a very exciting day because it's officially October and that means that it's spooky season. I'm wearing my Hocus Pocus. I know I said a thank you in my previous video but for some reason my last video of John Dupay commentary went fucking nuts. So thank you to everyone that subscribed. I don't know why all of a sudden you guys got recommended my content but fuck me am I super appreciative to all of the love that video got the amount of comments and likes and views like shit so yeah I mentioned in a community post that I was really really grateful because it wasn't a good mental health week the previous week I actually thought when I was filming the video that I was really stilted thankfully that didn't actually really come across on camera I was halfway through filming that video and honestly thought you know I'm just gonna scrap this because I feel like everyone's gonna know something was going on so I'm glad hopefully the editing and the way it came across seem to go down well. So, with that said, I'm going to be doing these videos. I'm going to try and do about one a week, maybe even more than one a week, because I've got a couple of weeks off work, so I might be able to get at least two up a week. We will see how things go, because I also have a busy couple of weeks. So I'm hoping to maybe entertain you guys during spooky season with spooky predators. <laughs> you like my background? That was unnecessarily fucking expensive, but so worth it. For you guys, I'm going to add to the spooky background. <laughs> so, today, what we are doing is we are doing another predator, of course. Mm, today is another very frustrating predator. This 32-year-old guy wants to spend a Sunday afternoon chilling with a 13-year-old girl after texting her about getting stoned. Why are you talking about doing drugs with an underage person, with a child? This is what annoys me. This guy didn't get as much of a sentence as like John Dupay or Jeff Sokol or some of the other predators because what he said was not overtly sexual. But it was still fucking inappropriate because you shouldn't be suggesting to have drugs with someone underage. Mike Manzi's date is about to go up in smoke. You'll be shocked when you hear what Manzi does for a living. The way he's standing out there so fucking cocksure of himself with his sunglasses. You can tell by the way he's like chewing gum. Is he chewing gum because he's looking forward to kissing the girl? That's a horrible thought. He's a math tutor. You heard it right. He teaches some of New York and Connecticut's wealthiest children how to solve complicated equations. This is the other thing. Again, he got a lighter sentence than some of the other people, but he's job literally puts him in the vicinity of other children all the time and therefore he is a high high risk surely to prey on other underage people and yet he got a lighter sentence just because what he didn't say he wanted to fuck them like but you might say manji flunked basic arithmetic because 32 plus 13 adds up to trouble it adds up to 45. <laughs> i've done the math it checks out Online, he calls himself Mike Thriller. What an early 2000s fucking name, honestly. He's a self-employed tutor with a bachelor's degree in mathematics from a small New York college. He's obsessed with pizza, and he says he smokes marijuana often. Ooh, so cool. Why do people always think that because they smoke marijuana, they're like, oh my god, I smoke marijuana all the time? Yeah, okay. So does like half the population. Honestly, I don't understand why weed isn't legalized, because considering the harm that like cigarettes and vapes can do to people's health compared to what weed can do. This is the Sting House set up in Fairfield, Connecticut, an upscale town on Connecticut's Gold Coast, about 50 miles from Manhattan. Side note, there was a sting operation they did. This was when it was actually TCAP. There was actually a neighborhood who all of the people found out that they were doing this series in like, a local house. And all the people from the neighborhood banded together to try and take down to, the to Catch a Predator program being in their neighborhood. And I'm like, apparently they think that the operation is drawing more predators to Murphy. If anything, this is going to scare everybody away. Like, how annoying is that, that you guys are trying to fuck with this operation? Honey, there's a pedophile sting down the street. Kids, get your shoes on. Let's bring the kids to the pedophile sting. Logic. It doesn't make any fucking sense. You, you may think like, oh, well, they're bringing predators to the area. They're bringing predators to the area to put them behind bars. And actually quite a few loads of other investigations, when they've uh, done these sting operations, some of the predators are like 10 minutes away, not three hours like Jeff Sokol. So some of them are literally right around the fucking corner. And yet for some reason, they thought that was a bad thing to catch the predators possibly in their neighborhood 
and put them behind bars. I don't understand that mentality. These are some of the texts the 32-year-old man who calls himself Mike Thrilla sent to our decoy, who he thought was 13. Did you blaze? You're my soulmate. So tomorrow's probably an A all day. Jesus, you're a tutor and you don't know it's an all day. I know he's a math tutor, but did you flunk English? All day fast and furious marathon. Why does he constantly just send photos of himself? Lol, you know what I want, soulmate. What? No, like, naturally, you know what I want since we're soulmate. Yes, technically, that's not as bad as what Jeff Sokol was saying or what John Dupay was saying, but calling a 13-year-old your soulmate. How is that not just as bad? That should be considered, right? Wow, you are so cute. You look way older, by the way. Again, saying that the decoy is cute, saying that she looks older. These are all things that should garner him a worse sentence. I, don't, I actually don't understand why he got off light compared to the others. Bunch of fucking technicalities, if you ask me. But he also admits he shouldn't be talking to a 13-year-old. Well, you are cool and cute, too. I just know I could get in trouble even talking to you, you know? So again, he recognises that he shouldn't be talking to her, shouldn't be calling her his fucking soulmate, and yet here we still are. He keeps saying she's cute, so he's recognising that he's attracted to a 13-year-old. Why did he get a lighter sentence? But Manzi continues texting. He later appears to become suspicious and asks the decoy to send a custom pic with his name on it. His fears that the girl isn't real are apparently quashed. So they have teenagers on call to send photos to Tetrad Corp. The Tetrad Corp can send photos to the Predators. Weird. The date is set, and on a crisp autumn day, Manzi arrives at the Sting House. I hate how he just stands there jutting his fucking jaw out, so cocky and confident. I hate it. I hate it. Huh? Hi. Put some WD-40 on that door! Okay. Yes, I do. No one eats the cupcake. Why is it every time I watch these videos, I haven't eaten for like hours? So when I see food, I'm like, mmm, food. The fucking fat girl in me is like, mmm, cupcakes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being like a little. No, that's weird. Right. This is like weird. Well, it's not, it's not so much that it's weird. It is weird. It is weird that you're in a house with a 13 year old while she's by herself. It is weird. You're a stranger. It's weird. I mentioned last time around, actually, like women have to, when you go on dates and stuff, you have to be aware of your gut feeling and you have to listen to it. Something I forgot to mention is like, normally, obviously 13 year olds don't know this. I don't expect them really to in some ways because, you know, at 13, you kind of want them to be naive to some of the things in the world. But when you're my, you would never meet someone at your house i remember there was a there's a dating coach that i get recommended on my for you page every so often he's like oh the man should pick you up at your house and everyone in the comments was like no when it's the first time you're meeting don't give someone your address because who knows if that person's fucking creepy and he's like oh well you know if you go into the first date like that then of course it's never going to be a 10 out of 10 relationship or whatever it's like no women have to put their safety first Women are the most likely to be assaulted. The statistics show that women have to be aware of this stuff. I just, I, I thought that was a very actually dangerous thing for him to say. But my point is, like, he's 30 odd or whatever, and he's saying like, oh, well, it's not really weird. It is weird because you shouldn't be meeting someone you've never met before at their house. <laughs> Someone said in the comments, and this is totally true. So he wants to look around and he's checking to make sure she's alone. If this wasn't a setup, then God knows how wrong it would get. Him going around wasn't for her safety, it was for his. It's to make sure that they're alone so that he can do stuff with his soulmate, as he liked to call her. So that he can have drugs with his soulmate. I don't know. What Manzi doesn't know is that I am waiting for him right behind that curtain. Here we go. <laughs> Hey, how are you? I'm good. Good. Why don't you have a seat right on that stool? He got like right up in his face. Please. Sure. No, right here, sir. No, no, I, I know. Please. I know. Like, already, he's such a cocky prick. I really fucking hate him. That's it. That's it, please. Okay. He's not as compliant as they usually are. John Dupay was, put your phone down. Immediately. <laughs> this guy. Okay. Oh, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. I need to talk to you. What? He's still standing. 
He's still fucking standing. You know why? Because he's probably nervous. So he's immediately like a gazelle looking for a way to like dart and go. What are you doing here today? Well, I'm I'm here because I was slightly concerned. You weren't concerned for shit. <laughs> Actually, so fucking mad. You weren't concerned. I was slightly concerned. No, you weren't. You were concerned maybe that other people were in the fucking house and you were gonna get caught. That's what you might have been concerned about. But no, that's not what he says. Concerned about what? Well. Concerned because she's talking to people that are a lot younger, a lot older. Freudian slip? Because you're talking with people a lot fucking younger than you should be, maybe? On the website. Now, why were you so concerned about a 13 year old girl? Well, well, she's talking to other people that are obviously the same age as me. Then why didn't you report her account? If you think that she was talking to people that were older, why don't you try and contact the parent? Why didn't you report her account? There are so many things you could have done bar turning up and also calling her your soulmate and saying you wanted to do drugs with her and that she was cute. Who are you fucking kidding? And how old are you? I'm 32. You're 32? Yes. I'm gonna be 34 next week. That's really depressing. <sighs> I love October, but I hate that I get older every October. <laughs> I'm just sad I'm getting older. It's a privilege to get older. Just, I'm gonna be in my mid thirties. Anyway, he's thirty two and talk. I just thirty two talking to a thirteen year old. It'll never not be fucking weird. I don't even talk to anyone under twenty. I've been on plenty of dating websites. I don't even like talking to people under the age of twenty five, twenty six. Like twenty seven is kind of my limit. And even that, I think, is young, considering I'm about to be 34. It's just if we have things in common, I might swipe. But majority of the time, it's like 28 or older. I can't get round the mentality, the mental gymnastics of talking to someone and being attracted to someone 13. They're a child. People in their 20s are pretty baby-faced, right? It's not 13, though. Is he making anyone else angry, or is it just me? So you came over to make sure she was okay? Well, I came over just to make sure that everything was fine. Everything was okay. In what way? Because you kept talking about coming around, hanging out and blazing with 13 year old. How's that? I was not. So you were going to search the house just now to make sure, what? Well, Bad guys I not here? Well, I mean, I don't know. I can, she could come, she could be here with a group of people for all I know. And she obviously was. That smirk on his face. Could be there with a group of people, aka people, what, like her parents? Who could get you in trouble for talking to her, their underage teen? Maybe, maybe th that kind of group of people? Maybe family members who want to beat the shit out of you for talking to a 13 year old? Speaking of family members, there's one of his in the production crew, which we will fucking get to. Which what? I think that would be like a safe idea? For you, yeah. You're thinking along safety for you. Not for her, for you, dick. What was today's lesson supposed to be? Today's lesson was apparently going to be, before Chris turned up, uh, teaching a kid how to smoke marijuana, because that's appropriate. Today, today's lesson for today's me- Today's lesson for you. Today's lesson for me was to not, unfortunately, really worry about other people. It's always about them, isn't it? The fact that he's like, oh, well, I, I, I need to not worry about other people because I could get myself in trouble. So I, I just need to not worry about other people. I shouldn't be such a good guy. Fuck you. I forgot how angry he makes. I, I always know how angry Jeff Sokol makes me because he is the most arrogant predator I feel like ever on TCAP. But Mike Manzi is fucking up there for the most arrogant, self absorbed prick predator. For sure. Now you're a tutor, with... correct? Mm -hmm. And who do you tutor? Other underage fucking kids. Incredibly concerning. People leave their kids with him and trust him. Like, that's so scary. I tutor. I tutor our, our, these, these ages. Older In... ages. Older. 13 is not older. Do you just mean preteens? God, I hope he got fired as a tutor by every single person and he wasn't able to ever teach again so worrying when like they have a position of power over a child and yet they still go out as well out of their way to talk to underage kids what do you tutor them in um mathematics mathematics mm -hmm. what about smoking marijuana 
Well, I mean, it's not really something that I try to tutor people in. Then how come you were constantly talking about it on your messages? I know it's a Christmas cup, leave me alone. I actually have a fuckload. I got new cups that are Halloween. I totally should have had one of those. I'm sorry. Well, it stuff. seems like it from the chat here. Fuck. <laughs> <sighs> He, again, doesn't think he's done anything wrong because all he's done is apparently show up and worry about a team. That's what he thinks he's done. Or that's what he thinks it'll be seen as. Oh, he's a tutor, so of course he wasn't going to do anything inappropriate with the team because he already tutors teams, of course. Of course he's going to be the, the one out of all of the Predators. Don't worry about the fact that he said she's cute multiple times, that he knew that he shouldn't be talking to her because she was underage, that he wanted to smoke marijuana with a fucking underage teen. On the fact that he kept calling this team his soulmate. But apparently he can laugh about it. Well, you're cool and cute too. I just know I could get in trouble even talking to you. you know? Yeah, that sigh. Yeah, fuck you. That could get you in a lot of trouble. Well, yes, of course. But that covering of the mouth, that's a, um, a blocking technique. It's been a while since I've watched it, uh, but that's like a shielding technique to stop you from basically saying something stupid. Look, may I please leave? No. You can leave when Chris says you can leave. And sit the fuck down. Not I'm just not. Yet. not okay. just yet. I have some more questions for you. Will I be able to leave after your question? Did you blaze? Wait, yes. sir? Yes. Wait, are you answering me or are you reading stuff? Yes, you can leave after I ask you a couple questions. Are you sure? It's not ready for you to say, is it? That could be her dad. And um, you're lucky he hasn't taken a baseball bat shameless style to you. Are sure. there police outsider? Oh. Wouldn't you like to know? I'll get to that. Then please, later. sir, can you please just tell me? He begs. Like, he was so cocksure, cocky, and laughing about this, like, 60 seconds ago. But now it's, is there police outside? Please, I need to know. Like, he's desperate not to get in trouble now. Because you know why he'll lose his job? Because he has a job that puts him in contact with underage fucking people. Because I really can't. Oh, I... So what it looks like, Mike, is that you came here mm -hmm. to smoke weed with a 13-year-old girl. and He literally just nodded. Yep, yep. That's what I was planning on doing, yeah. I mean, body language does say that it won't necessarily mean that, but I mean, I'm reading it as that. Then whatever was going to happen was going to happen. Yeah, but that's... Yeah, but. Yeah, that is what I said. But what? You said you were going to go to a 13-year-old's house and smoke drugs with her. What after but was going to exonerate you from that? Seriously. It's not entirely what was going well, on. Explain it to me. I just told you I was coming here to make sure everything was okay. Like, it really wasn't that far. Oh, it really wasn't that far. So again, this was a predator in the vicinity of the sting house. It was just like, oh, you know, I'll just drop around because that's a good thing to do. Obviously, like she invited me in. How is that an excuse that she invited you in? I swear, all predators read the same hymn sheet. And there were not. So you were just being a good Samaritan today. Well, I was trying to to. A good Samaritan. What to your soulmate that you thought was cute? You wanted to be a good Samaritan to that person who's underage. You mean that one? You know, I was coming here to to make sure things okay. Thirteen year old I deal, girl. I deal with kids all the time. That makes it worse. You deal with kids all the time, and you turn around and smoking weed with other fucking thirteen year olds. Are you calling other thirteen year olds that you work with your soulmate? Are you saying that they're cute? It makes it worse. You have the ability to be around other underage people that you could prey on. Right, would you think that the parents of the kids you tutor would be comfortable with you coming to visit a 13 year old girl after talking about smoking marijuana and hanging Probably out? Probably not, you're Probably right. Probably not. You're right. Yeah, he is right. Nobody would be comfortable with you being anywhere near their children after seeing this video. I hope they all saw it. This thing, I would hope that the police have to get in contact with the employers in general, but especially when they have daily interactions with children. Otherwise, what the fuck are they doing? Now you tutor kids. Sir, may I ask you a question? Yes, you may. First off, that is not completely true. I, I have a couple more questions for you. That's not a question. That was a statement. Again, did you fucking flunk English? I really don't want to answer any more questions. Oh, that's tough luck, isn't it? Because you're going to go down to the police department and answer a lot fucking more questions. And I feel... Do you have marijuana with you? No, I do not. Is it in your car? No, it is not. So you lied to him? Probably in the shoe. I used to date someone who smoked weed. And fuck me, they'd find some very creative ways to hide it. Then why did you say you were going to come over here and blaze? What's I the lighter for? I smoke cigarettes there in my car. Yeah, sure. Again, you see how this looks. I know how it looks, and I'm A 32-year-old guy who deals with kids all the time 
comes over to visit a 13-year-old girl who's alone after a discussion about smoking marijuana together. Yeah, it looks inappropriate as fuck. Sir, I understand this. I'm sorry. You understand this, but you're consistently just sort of like brushing it aside. I understand. Yeah, sorry about that. But, you know, forget let's forget about it. No, I'm just going to go. Can you tell me where the back door is so I don't have to get called by police? Because you know I'm a good guy. I'm a good Samaritan. Did you blaze? Yes. You're my soulmate. You call a 13-year-old girl a soulmate? We were just talking. That's... No. I don't say this lightly. I've never, ever, ever called someone my soulmate talking on an app. Ever. That means you've been talking for, what, like a couple of days or something? Like, that's... Again, that's a manipulation tactic by predators because they're doing the love bombing where they're saying, you're my future, you're my soulmate, you're my this, you're my, like, you're going to be the love of my life. Like, when that happens so quickly, I'm not saying you can't say that to people after you've known them for a while, after you've been on dates and stuff like that, obviously. Especially, you know, if you're both of age. <laughs> but when you immediately, within like a few hours of knowing someone or a few days of knowing someone or something, are love bombing them, that's a manipulation tactic. And by predators, it's a way to prey on fucking teens because all people want at that age is to feel special. Come on, please. Come on, you're 32. You got nothing else to do on a Sunday? I'm trying to watch, I'm gonna watch football. Why do they all feel the need to watch football with a 13 year old kid in an empty house with no adults? Bar them. Isn't football like ridiculously long in America as well? Like five plus hours or some shit? And you wanted to sit next to a 13 year old on a sofa in an empty house for like five plus hours. I just, imagine if this was genuinely a girl who was 13, who was on her own, who'd invited this guy around and he took advantage of her during that five hours. Oh, it makes me so upset. Yeah, here with a 13 year old girl after you blazed. You see how this looks. I know how it looks, I'm very sorry. He's not sorry. That was such a throwaway. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. That's not an apology. Sorry. May I please leave? No, you may not. <laughs> There's something you is, need to know. Is there cops? I'm There's gonna... something you need to know. Please. I'm Chris Hansen. No, you're not. You didn't notice the H versus P at the top of that piece of paper you were so glaringly looking at? Did you just see your face, like, plastered all over those messages? Yes, sir. No, you're not. Yes, sir. <laughs> so he knows who Chris Hansen is then, obviously. Please let me go home, guys. <laughs> Fucking cameras, like, right in his face. Like, here you go, bitch. <laughs> Sir, Guys, it'd be best if you oh, went please. out this door. No, because I'm going to get arrested. I know it's going to happen. Sir, I really can't afford to do this. You can't afford? Don't worry, sir. It's free. I totally stole that joke from the comments, by the way. That's a chef's kiss comment. I'm really not here for any malintent. You're not here for any malintent. You were going to be smoking drugs with a 13-year-old. That is fucking malint- Oh, that was also cute and your soulmate. That's malintent. Bitch. I really can't. Please do not. But look at the chat. I really just want to. He looked directly at the camera! <laughs> Please let me go home, guys. I'm gonna get arrested going that way. Guys. The reason he's going to this guy is because that's his uncle. That's gotta be so heartbreaking in a way. Like, imagine your nephew. You've watched them grow up from a fucking kid all the way to 32, and they turn up at the sting house. You're catching predators who are fucking sexting. Oh my god, that's gotta be so hard to deal with. I don't know how he kept his call. I would have lost it. Please, no, I can't. I can't, I won't. I think that's as well why he feels like he could push it. I can't, I won't. I think that's why he th felt like he could because obviously he knows him. Please. You can't go this way. Please, man. No. You can't go this way. Guys, oh, this is horrible. Good bitch, it should be. You were going there to be inappropriate with a fucking 13 year old. This is horrible. There's only one way out, through the garage, where the Fairfield, Connecticut cops are waiting with a pair of handcuffs with his name on them. And a taser. Police. I know, I know. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. Oh, please. Put your hand behind your back. Guys. See, yeah, it's like pulling, and that's why they're starting to get agitated, because they don't know what he's going to do. They don't know what's necessarily in his pocket. Because. I don't know if they have cameras in the garage. I think it's just in the little room off where Chris comes out that they've got the, all the cameras and everything. So I don't know if obviously they saw him take the stuff out of his pockets and put it on the thing to show that he didn't have anything in his pockets. But I mean, he could have had something in his waistband. You don't know. Hands behind your back. There's four police officers surrounding you. 
comply. Just follow the instructions, okay? Just calm down. Just follow the instructions. We'll explain everything. No, just relax. Yeah, he's getting very, very agitated. I can understand why they may feel the need to use a taser. Please, I can't. Ah, if this was another situation, he'd be down his fucking face on the ground. On in other tea caps, they'd literally. There was a guy in a ghillie suit who like took someone's legs out and got them on the ground. Police on the ground! But here, it's just so tame, and they're giving him a lot of fucking chances. Manzi argues with the cops, and while he's not resisting arrest, he sure isn't being overly cooperative. He got a taser out, and it's on his back. Listen closely. The cops tell Manzi they may have to pull out the taser. You're gonna get taser. Kneel down. I'm gonna get what? You're gonna Kneel get down. I'm gonna get down. I'm gonna get down. Okay. Yeah, he don't want to get fucking tased. And I mean, he, it was literally like right here. Normally, you tase from like further away. That was right on him. That's a shame, really, isn't it? He was so cocksure and laughing a few minutes ago. Yeah. Kneel down. Kneel yeah. down. Yes, because you're committing a crime. Yeah. It's not really in your say so, is it? Yes, Mike, we are. He takes off his jacket before posing for a mugshot. His t shirt is a math equation. I bet he thought it was so fucking cool with that math t shirt. Wonder if that works with the other 13 year olds. It's a t shirt popular with graduates of MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. But he didn't go there. He got his degree from a small New York college. <laughs> it's popular with graduates of MIT that he didn't graduate from. That's actually a really good burn. As he's booked, he bites his fingernails. He's nervous. That's the nervous thing. And then he's fingerprinted before he decides to waive his right to remain silent. Again, I'm not a body language expert, but the way he's covering himself like that, we cover our vital organs again, I think, when we, like, we're being attacked or in a situation where we feel intimidated. So we can also, like, try and appear smaller. Don't take my word for it. I'm not a body language expert by any means. Watched a lot of Observe in the past. I actually haven't watched him, like, most of this year. Sorry, Observe. During the interrogation with the detective, Manzi fidgets a lot. Again, that's nerves and anxiety when you're constantly moving around. <sighs> he lets out a big sigh, but it's understandable. He's on the hot seat in the ice-cold interrogation room. JCS Criminal Psychology talks about this, where in certain interrogation rooms and uh, techniques, they put the person in the corner when they talk to them. And the reason they do that is so that they feel cornered. It's so that psychologically get into that mindset of, again, I'm being attacked. You're more likely to admit to the crime you've been arrested for. I do. I understand the age right. difference. I it's do. important that you understand that. You still turned up, but you understand the age difference. I do. I do. I understand the age difference. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I really was not intending on doing anything with this girl. But you talked about doing stuff even if it's just smoking fucking drugs with someone underage. Again, chat can get you fucking charged. You're not that smart. What'd you think when, when she said she was 13? I just, I, I, I really felt like there was definitely a position that she was putting herself in. No, I think you'll find that you as a 32 year old were putting her in an inappropriate position by talking to her about inappropriate things. 13 year olds don't fucking know. They don't know any better. It's meant to be the adult's responsibility. There's a reason why there's consent laws. Because people who are underage don't know any better. <sighs> it's meant to be the adult's responsibility to make sure they don't put children in the position he was putting her in. She said that her mother was coming home today. Right. Until about, about six o'clock. So you thought it was a good idea to go around when the mother wasn't there? What is the logic? So I was, I was going to go there, I was going to go hang out. And if her, if her mother ended up turning up and seeing a 32 year old with a 13 year old, she'd have every right to call the police. Where are you going with this? You know, coming in, I would have explained to her what was going on. But that, you know, besides that, that would have been, that's all I would have. And you think she would have been okay with that? I would have just explained to her that her daughter was talking to someone older, AKA me. So I thought it was a good idea as someone older to come around and spend time with your underage kid rather than reporting the profile or at the very least trying to contact her parent to say, did you know your underage teen is talking to people over the consent age who are adults who should know better than to talk inappropriately with them. I just... <sighs> Did you, were you guys going to go out to eat or anything? I know you guys talk about food a lot in we here. We did talk a lot about food, but we didn't... I was getting hungry, kind of. Actually, I we wasn't did, sure. Text. I have no idea. If he did say he was going to go out with this team, 
to go get food. How do you think that would look? A 32-year-old guy with a 13-year-old, who, let's be honest, he'd probably be inappropriately touching because that's his soulmate. He could literally be her dad. He could have been 19, had a kid, and by the time he's 32, that kid would be 13. Do you know what I mean? You guys talk about weed a lot. We, you guys yeah, we smoke. spoke about that a little bit. And you think that's appropriate to do with a 13-year-old? Do you think her mum would have been okay with you talking to her 13-year-old about weed? We yeah. were the plan to smoke and, and eat. And... Um, I mean, you know, I was planning on trying to, like, just, like I said, being there, make sure things were okay. I would have definitely sat down and ate. I would have hung out. Where are you going with this? I would have definitely sat down and ate while a 13-year-old just sat there and watched me eat. You're not a good Samaritan. You're not a good person. You're a piece of shit predator. I'm going to do some yoga later, lol. How's your downward dog? You remember what you said? No, I don't, but you can... How's your downward dog? Well, okay, yeah, but that's a yoga move still. Unfortunately, that's the most sexual thing he said, hence why he gets a lighter sentence. But he still called her cute multiple fucking times and called her, called a 13-year-old at 32, his soulmate, multiple times. This is a good Samaritan, right? It is, but yeah. Like, come on. I mean, I'm a guy, you're a guy. I, I, I get it. You were consistently inappropriate in other ways, and therefore that was very leering. Almost flirtatious. So Have you're I... putting a, a 13 year Foulness, yeah. That's a great word for it, Mike. Yeah, foulness. You're being foul with a 13 year old. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree. A year old girl uh -huh. into some sort of danger. A 13 year old who can't who can't make those decisions and judgments on their own. They cannot fucking consent, therefore you are a danger, Mike Manzi. You're not a good person, you're not a good Samaritan. Because Manzi never sent any sexual texts, he was charged only with one felony, criminal attempt to commit risk of injury to a minor. See what I mean? Genuinely don't think that's fair. He pleaded guilty and got a suspended sentence of three years and was placed on probation. Three years! Compared to the eight and the ten or whatever it was. I can't remember. He got three. Do you think he was up to more than just sharing a joint? Obviously. He called her cute and his soulmate. You know, I don't know. You can tell he's good at talking quick. Really scary that he was around children for a living. Maybe that's why he thought if the mum turned up, he would be able to sort of manipulate her into thinking he was okay and get out before maybe she called the fucking police. But he didn't go to MIT, he graduated from a small New York college. I fucking love how Chris just had to slide in a little extra stab there. What an icon. Did you know if you tell police that you can't afford to be arrested, they're not legal <laughs> to arrest you? Please put your hands behind your back. Please guys, I can't. All right boys, you can't. So let's pack it up and go home. The fact that these idiots walk straight into a stranger's home whom they've never met in person never ceases to amuse me. They don't even stop and think for a few seconds if the person on the other side they're talking to is really a 13, 14 year old child. There's a YouTube channel, well there's a few YouTube creators that have done these similar things where they create usernames and they go around messaging these people and then eventually these people turn up one of them was a big YouTuber at one point as well. And they literally catch these people and because they're not working with the police, obviously they can't get arrested. But obviously it gets their faces out the aftermath. He did not have to register as a sex offender. No years on the sex offender registry whatsoever, even though he turned up. Hello. You alright? You can do it. You want my attention because I've been sitting here for like over an hour. He later moved back in with his parents after being unable to find any more tutor work. I wonder fucking why. Even being heckled in public spaces by people who recognised him from the show. Don't be inappropriate with a 13-year-old. And this wouldn't have happened. Manzi was caught on Reddit by observant fans of the show based on comments he was leaving on posts. Hello. Hello. Manzi claimed pieces of his catalogue were missing from the copy. It doesn't really matter, you were still talking about being soulmates with a fucking 13-year-old. Like, I don't know what context anyone needed. Including evidence that dismisses any predatory implications such as Mandy trying to buy edibles off the decoy. What? You were trying to buy edibles from a 13-year-old kid? Why do you think that makes it any better? If he wasn't actually going to do anything sexual with her, he would have groomed her. I'm 100,000% fucking certain. Again, that could be why he wasn't that worried about meeting the mother, because if he was doing anything or touching her, he could be like, oh, let me become friends with the mother, and then, in a couple of years when she's more of age, then the mother will like me enough that I can fuck her daughter. Anyway, this was fun. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, make sure to give us a like and subscribe if you like it. I'd really appreciate it. Like I said, I'm going to try and get at least one video up a week. 
um, of these reactions so please subscribe if you want to see more of these and I'll try and push out more while I'm off for a couple of weeks but no promises just because I've got a few things planned. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!